Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Kristen and today I'm going to be recapping all of my June reads for you guys. So let's get started. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I feel like June has been the longest month. I don't know why. It just feels like it has had 500 days in it. And even though that it feels that way, I did not read as quite as much as I wanted to. Um, I had a lot going on and I had these like really lofty goals, which I usually tend to have and did not quite make it. So now I am trying to make it through, still make it through the books I wanted to read in June and still read the books I want to read in July. So trying to double down, trying to read more, um, trying to get it done. So that being said, I read I think seven books in the month of June and so yeah. The first books I read in the month of June go together because they are in a series and that is Carve the Mark and The Fates Divide. I really did enjoy these books. Um, I gave Carve the Mark four stars and I gave The Fates Divide five stars. I really liked the second one more. I don't know if it was because I was more familiar with the characters and um, ready to kind of see what was going to happen after the first book but I really did enjoy it. Um, it follows two main characters who come from warring, um, warring countries, I guess, and, and families, and Akos and Syrah, and they have to kind of work together because of circumstances, um, even though they're enemies, and everybody in this world has an ability of some kind, of some sort, and some of the people are fated, which means they know the, their fate. It, it's kind of like worded to where they don't know exactly what their fate fate is for sure, but they know their fates and um, fated families are kind of held to a higher um, esteem than other families. And Akos and Syra are both from fated families. And um, it just was full of a lot of, uh, a lot of plot t twists, I thought. Um, I love books that when I'm I think something's happening and then they turn it around and so definitely had this in these books uh, I guess it was kind of like a, I guess you would call it sci-fi fantasy not really sure I'm really bad at categorizing books but I do um, I do very much recommend uh, the Carve the Mark series. It is by Veronica Roth and she is the one who wrote Divergent. So you know it's going to be good if you liked Divergent. Okay, next I have A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmerer. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. But uh, this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and it was such an interesting take on the story. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it five out of five stars. I did. I can't say enough about it. I've read a bunch of mixed reviews. Some people who um, I follow and really, really hold their opinions as solid didn't like this book, but I just, I did. I loved it. Um, I loved the characters. I think maybe there could have been a little bit more character development, I guess. Um, but I really did just thoroughly love, love, love this book. Um, Harper is not your typical um, princess, and Ren is not your typical prince. He is not cursed in the typical way. It just was a very interesting take, and sometimes you just, with story retellings, you don't know what you're going to get. And I love this one, and I cannot wait to read the next one. Trying to hold off on getting it because I just bought a ton of books, but um, I am very excited to read the next in this series. Next, I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and I gave that one five out of five stars as well. I had already watched the movie, so I kind of knew what was going to happen, but um, the way the story is told, the um, I just, I loved the characters, and I loved the depth of the characters. Um, I loved the, the just the, the story behind it, and the awareness that it brings, and really did enjoy reading this book. I am looking at getting some more of Angie Thomas's works. I got this one from the library, um, but I think they have some more. Uh, but I really did 
like this book. I recommend it to everyone, to anyone. Um, definitely, even if you've read, even if you've seen the movie, definitely take the time to read the book. It is well worth it. And next, I read Stamped, and I'm gonna read the authors on from this. It's Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi. I didn't want to get that wrong. Um, and Stamped is about racism and anti-racism, and I gave it four out of four stars just because I know it's supposed to go fast because it is a bridged version um, of his longer stamped book. Um, it kind of gives you a really fast flowing history of racism in our country, not even just in our country, but racism in general. Uh, it was very, very interesting to me. I learned a whole lot of things that I did not know. With that being said, there were some things in the book that I would like to go back and research for myself as well. I mean, I don't ever think we should take something at face value necessarily, so we should always kind of search and research for ourselves. And that's the whole reason I read this book anyways. Um, I just wanted to educate myself more and am trying to continue to educate myself more. But um, if you are looking for a book that just kind of gives you um, a rundown of racism in our country, it is history. He says it's a not a history history book. It doesn't read like a history book. Um, it's a very easy read. It's not complicated, uh, but it does give a history uh, from like the first ever recorded um, racist like s saying or or speech or anything from that all the way till present day. And um, it did give a whole lot of information. I mean, I learned things about people in history that I did not know. I had never really known. He he talks about um, segregationist, assimilationist, and anti-racist. And if you are a an assimilationist, then you're not truly anti-racist. And assimilationists um, basically have the view that uh, you need to try to be more white to assimilate into the population to into the white population, I guess, so that you be accepted, I guess. That was assimilationists and segregationists are people who want, you know, obviously separation. Um, and then they're true anti-racists that you should be you. You are who you are. You have a history. You have, um, you have your person and who you are and where you came from and your experiences. Those are valid and there's no difference um, as far as like, human race goes, um, because a lot of the views in the book that he had talked, that the authors talked about and brought up were the views of, like, lesser than, um, and greater than, and even, I, he even talked about Harriet Beecher Stowe, who I really liked, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and did not realize, like, her whole thing was that, um, people of color have, uh, more spirit, then was it spirit or soul more soul than white people and therefore it came out that white people had more intelligence and so then even then I mean it was just very interesting um some people it talked about Martin Luther King Jr. and his his going from assimilationist to anti-racist as well as other prominent um, historical fi figures. It's very, very, very interesting. Like I said, I am going to go back. I am going to research some more on some of the things that were said in the book just because I want to make sure that I'm not just taking everything at straight up face value. Um, I'm going to educate for myself. But I do recommend this book if you are looking to be more educated and you kind of want like a quick, not that I wanted a quick, I don't know how to say it, like something an easier read than just like a straight up history book, which can be kind of daunting and lose your focus. This one, the way the pace kept you interested, kept you into it, I thought. The next one on my list was Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. I have already read this one before. This was a reread for me. I've already said that I'm trying to go back through and really read um, this series and the series that is in the same world as this one. And I always have loved these books. Uh, this was a five out of five stars for me. I'm not going to go into what it's about because I think most people kind of know that it's like the Percy Jackson. Um, he's a demigod. Not even a demigod. He's not a demigod. He is a half half blood. 
Um, he's half human, half god. Does that make him a demigod? I can't remember. I don't know if that's the correct terminology. It's been a day, y'all. But anyways, this is a good one. I'm trying to get through this series before Disney comes out with their um, series on it. So that was kind of what spurred this on as well as I'm wanting to get back into a series that is longer like Harry Potter and like Fable Haven. So that's where my interest in rereading those has come from. And then lastly, I just finished Ninth House. And I kind of talked about this one briefly in my last video that I had really built this one up and built it up and built it up in my head because I had read so much from different people that I respect that really liked it and it was not for me. I don't know if I was harsh by giving it three stars. It just wasn't for me. There was a whole lot going on in it. Um, I'm not really a ghost story kind of person. I don't know. I felt like there was so much going on that it kind of glazed over some things that would have been um, better told, like more in depth, I guess. I don't know. Um, I And also, it's not really in my wheelhouse, which is not to say that I don't like books that aren't fantasy, because I do, and I guess, I don't know what you would call this, but I don't know. But I do like to branch out, and this definitely was a branching out for me. It just didn't do it for me. It happens. And I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion, but I have heard many good things about this book and not many bad things. So, sad story, but just didn't do it for me. So, unfortunately, that is it. That's all I read in June. I hate it because I really wanted to, um, really wanted to read more. But I am at 40 books for the month, for the month, 40 books for the year so far, which I think is pretty good for me. And hopefully June will be a better reading month. It's day oh. I mean July, y'all. I hope July is a better reading month. It is day one and I'm already 100 pages into another book and I, um, that I'm really, really liking. I just have a lot going on right now. So hopefully I can just still my mind and stop taking naps in the middle of the day and <laughs> read and do stuff instead. The struggle is real. I am gonna have a hard time going back to work when school starts. That is for sure because nap life has been the life for me so anyways going off on tangents i don't know i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh let me know down below and i will catch you guys next time mm -hmm.